Okay, so uh, welcome. Uh, was it is it pronounced Vantile? Oh, th that's just my uh, online name. So my name is Valentin. Uh, Valentin, just, uh, like in uh, Valentine's Day. Like Valentine's Day, yeah. So uh, welcome, uh, Valentine, um, who is going to present to us was his Google Summer of Code pro project. Um, yep. Thank you very very much for coming up to to, to demonstrate. Uh, so first of all, uh, I want to thank all the dev. Uh, for the members of the dev team who are here, and especially Tav, and for the uh, support they gave me f uh, for the past month and a half. And I think for the future month and a half, I'm going to have to thank <laughs> the UX team, because there are a lot of lots of things to be talked about with my uh, Google Summer of Code project. So um, if you could, yeah, uh, give me presenter rights. Thank you. Um, Entire screen. So, uh, does anyone still hear me? I just, okay, yes. great. Great. Thank you for the confirmation. Uh, I'm going to start with how my project started, so a bit of history uh, before, before that. Uh, Tev had a, a demo that I think uh, uh, it's been mentioned in this uh, session before, uh, a couple of years ago, and he improved it at one point, and he recommended me to start with it. And that demo is uh, almost close to this one. So. I'm going to start with a blank version. As you can see, this is a, a small Inkscape mockup. Just going to go. A small Inkscape mockup. And what I'm presenting is related to panels, windows, and dialogues. So the features are going to revolve around dialogues. Uh, my project uh, is scoped as uh, removing an old dependency and trying to improve the behavior of what we already have by changing it completely from the ground up. Uh, how does that look? As you can see, I can insert some mock-up dialogues here, and uh, they're going uh, into this kind of new widget. The, it's, uh, this is called a notebook, and a notebook can have multiple tabs. There, uh, this type of JTK widget is already in other dialogues. Uh, through Inkscape, uh, I don't know, Clone Tyler, I think has one. And you can insert multiple uh, dialogues and uh, something that uh, tries to keep it as close to what we already have, you can move things to a new window. And that is similar to how our docked uh, floating dialogues are right now. but. As you can see, uh, this is actually a full window, unlike uh, the docked dialogues we have. So it's exactly as a notebook that you see in the main window, uh, and it's separated uh, to that one. Something special that my feature will look at, I don't, I'm not really sure exactly or how good is it uh, right now in Inkscape, but. Uh, Let's say if I had two windows and worked on two projects separately, I could, for example, uh, I'm going to close this tab right now. I could select the first window, do something at it, and I'm going to use my docked dialog palette, as you can see here, to change the background color because that's the demo functionality. And I could select the other one and uh, use the same dock window that I docked from the first uh, Inkscape window to change uh, properties in the second window. So um, each uh, floating dock, as you can see it here, uh, tracks the most recent window that you work with. And it's somehow logical. You want uh, to work with the tools that you make them float uh, for multiple things, or uh, so you could have your workflow on your screen just as you like it. Uh, just checking a bit the chat to see if everything is fine. Okay, so this is the mockup, but there are a few more features that I have to show. So you can drag 
dialogues from one uh, notebook to the other. So right now you can see that I, I can drag them through uh, like one window through the other. And what's actually more interesting, I'm going to make a bit more space by closing this window. I can take a notebook and I'm going to take the export notebook from the dock and put it on the edge right here. And now I have two notebooks that are in parallel. So you and I can resize the whole thing as much as the space we, oh, of the screen will allow me. And I can put the dialog just as I want them on the screen. And with this, I can actually make some more complex layouts. So I could do something like this if my fingers will help me on the touchpad. So you can see three somehow in parallel dialog. So these two are part of the same structural unit and are parallel to this one. And I can move this export dialog to the other edge and put it here. And now I have a notebook on the other side. And here you could, you could see that it's a bit more similar to what GIMP has. So th that has been the source of inspiration for what, uh, what I've been working for uh, as uh, I've been guided. And uh, I originally thought it was a great feature and I'm trying for one month and a half to, uh, to work on it. Some more things that could you, uh, you could do. So as you can see, these two dialogues on the right are one on top of another. I could use this uh, little thing and expand, uh, hide the first one and the second one gets automatically expanded. So I can just use the clone tiler right now, or I can hide the clone tiler and expand the whole palette to see as many colors as I want. S something else, I could put a couple of dialogues here and maybe uh, I want to see only the icons. Right now, the icons are not clearly visible, but uh, that's just in the demo. And I can do this, hide all tab labels. And now I would have only the icons. That's exactly how I keep my uh, UI in uh, GIMP, for example. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes break from this demo, uh, wait for like questions and stuff. And then I'm going to go to um, my version of Inkscape with my code integrated. Thank you for the quick presentation. Could you briefly describe the Google Summer of Code pro project and also uh, how you did the mock-up um, prototype? Sorry. So uh, the prototype is mo mostly Tav's code from two of his mock-ups, but I reworked a lot of functionality and uh, rewrote a whole giant algorithm for resizing the panels. As you uh, saw, uh, if you go here, I can resize the things up until their minimum size or their nat natural size. Uh, I think I go to the minimum in the algorithm. And uh, it's a lot of work and it's kind of re-implementing several uh, GTK uh, classes. Some of them are uh, I have wrappers over dialogues, windows, and uh, notebooks. And the um, GTK paint, uh, I uh, am not using it at all. I have re rewrote it from the start. So starting from Tav's code, but it's uh, a completely custom multi-pane widget. And uh, this multi-pane widget is actually useful. Right now, it's integrated only in this dialog window form but it's actually useful for several features that Adam tried to talk about on uh, the UX channel. So, so one question was uh, from Adam, can you save the layouts? Uh, so in this demo, yes, you can. So uh, I hope it will work, but it should. Uh, it will save the layout of the most recent window as we only start with one window when we start the Inkscape, but uh, that's how the, I made the feature initially. So I will close this and I will start a new one. And it has the exact same, same dialogues. So palette, export, and clone tiler on the right in this order in a single notebook. Can you snap to the bottom on, underneath the canvas? Uh, oh, he, right here, no, I cannot snap there. I haven't designed it like that, but I could if I would put the actual canvas in a multi-paint widget. Right now, it's 
so there, uh, the whole dialogue system is right now a multi paint that is uh, horizontal. As you can see, I have these handles on the left and on the right, but each like notebook, it's in itself, each column is a multi paint. So if I put uh, the canvas itself in, so in on the root multi paint, but if I add another one, I could snap on the bottom of it. It's a, a Sorry, preference. Yeah. Uh, it's a user preference, and this, I haven't tested with the UX team this until now. I just took the best guess. Can you show what happens when a lot of tabs are in one, one container? Uh, this is actually something that's on my bug list. Uh, if I add a lot of tabs, they, they just... Uh, so if I try to uh, add also find and I don't know, they uh, don't... Uh, even though I have a feature that will only focus on like uh, not all of them, uh, right now it doesn't always work. I have to hook it up a bit better. So ideally, I would get into a moment where these things, uh, this notebook will only show me like two tabs and the other I could go with uh, a clicks on two buttons that appear on the left on the right and I could go through them all. But also the, all, uh, each uh, notebook has this button and here you, uh, in this demo, you can see I have all the dialogues here, but in the my Inkscape version, I only have the dialogues that are attached to this notebook. So you could like go quick here and select one. And for example, the find dialogue already exists in this notebook. If I want to reopen it, I will focus on it directly because it, it's already open. So I think I believe the idea about saving was more about um, not just saving it for the last used, but being able to create profiles where you can quickly select a, a setup. Uh, I think that can be done, uh, actually, but uh, the code is not written like that right now. But I do save it on a hard file. Uh, the however you arrange the tabs right now. So, so this it's is not a future feature. It could be integrated, but I haven't thought, uh, thought about it at all right now to have like profiles and always start from that one. Right. Okay, uh, if I can go past this point a bit. So this was the original demo. And right now, uh, for the last couple of weeks, I've been migrating dialogues back and front. There are about 39 of them. Uh, and I have this Inkscape. So, uh, can you confirm that you still see my screen? Yes, we can okay. see Okay, so uh, if you're as asking why the both toolbars are on the left, it was yeah, because it was easier for me to keep this sidebar here that says you can drop dialogues here. So uh, in this Inkscape, you can see that uh, there are called handles. Yeah, there are uh, these zones with a little tiny line here that the, uh, are on the boundary between widgets that are children of the multi pane so you could drag things around uh, and resize them and right now this is not resized okay but potentially if i change the toolbar how the toolbar works a bit this could actually help on uh, arranging the icons on two rows or three rows or something like that so you could choose how many icons you have on the same row and it would help with uh, screens that are not as tall as mine or whatever at all screen. So uh, not all dialogues actually work properly right now on my version, but I can try to insert a few. So fill and stroke and I don't know, layers. Uh, align and distribute. And I hope that my migra migration still kept all the functionality. So I'm just going to test one. Uh, I actually don't know how I triggered from the toolbar the, the, uh, the preferences, but I did. Uh, and you can see I can still detach them and put them in dialog windows and not focus on them for now because I'm not interested. Uh, the resizing is a bit uh, more has a bit more work to be done, but I'm just gonna try aligning some stuff on the screen to show you that it still works. 
So, oh, uh, right now the dialogues like I could take them and put it on the other edge, but uh, I don't think that people will use a lot of, in a lot of cases, this edge as they are probably not used to it. But you could have your own layouts on the right and make it work perfectly fine. So just as I tried before with uh, two parallel notebooks and here you would have on the bottom and and as you can see, uh, th this is a similar thing as uh, it happens in the current version of Inkscape, but I'm gonna work on uh, fixing it. Uh, the fill and stroke dialog uh, needs an amount of space. The align and distribute needs an amount of space also. So they right now exit the screen and I'm not able to force it under the minimum size because I uh, want each child of the paint widget to have enough size for its minimum. Uh, rendering but for now I'm just gonna keep it like this uh, yeah the so there's using a, a scroll win window yes a scrolled window would uh, be my uh, choice but I'm gonna explore a bit through the ch uh, things because the, some dialogues are still not rendering correctly so uh, for for the main reason that many dialogues uh, were really uh, closely related to their old class parent and that UI is thought a bit different from mine and they uh, fill the whole uh, height of the screen and they don't actually need it. And they feel it, uh, the buttons are look strangely apart. I'm going to try to m make an example out of something. Uh, what could be the best example for this? Well, right now it's still rough uh, as an UI, but I'm just gonna uh, wait for questions and when you want, I'm gonna open another Inkscape in, uh, instance, if you want so to Valentine, I, I think I think the first thing that everybody wants to do is, is congratulate you on the on tackling this issue because uh, even from your um, you know rough and ready uh, example here, we can see we can see and imagine all of the improvements to the Inkscape in interface that will that will be possible. Um, people are asking already if they can move the toolbars and you know if they can dock to different sides and things. And th this is a clear example where um, this functionality will definitely improve a lot of these paper cuts where people have small issues. Um, so I wanted to I wanted to first of all um, pass along my my gratitude. Uh, thank you very much for working on this specifically because I think it will help a, a lot of users. Uh, thank you and thank you for the people uh, saying a lot of things in the comments. Uh, thank you, Adam. Yes, there there is a lot of potential, and I understand that uh, moving actually the toolbar positions and. Uh, resizing them, it will be really helpful, but I would need first to standardize a bit how the toolbar widget works, because as the toolbars are right now, they're actually breaking my implementation. I can't, uh, that's a bit more for uh, Tav and uh, Martin here, but they actually, I can't destroy the uh, dialogues properly because I can't destroy the toolbars because apparently they have the same reference and if I destroy one, the other disappears. I don't know what's happening yet, but there are a lot of things to be solved. That sounds great. So if anybody has questions uh, for Valentine. I, uh, um, there, there is a question. Is there a way to collapse or minimize individual panels or only containers should be collapsed? So uh, for the whole panel, uh, I think you can collapse, uh, if I understand the uh, question correctly. So the dialogue, you cannot collapse it. You can hide it. You can collapse the whole notebook, as you said, and a whole pane, like a column, you couldn't collapse it from the reason that I'm uh, asking for the pain, doing the locations to give a minimum sizes that each dialogue requests. But if I can find a solution or devs can help me find a solution around that, maybe we can work it out.
that sounds like you might need some, um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, not not necessarily a prototype, but like mockups to figure out what it is, what it's doing and what we need it to do. Yeah, uh, well, I, I was go, uh, going to suggest releasing a mockup that people might actually be able to use, but after I fix some of some more of the bugs that are currently existing and two, two of the dialogues are not working properly at all uh, right now. So, but after I get off this couple of hard holes in about a week, I guess, I will ask directly with executables, like, can you try this on your machine? How does it work? That, that, that could actually be an excellent example of, of having to do some of the, um, the, the, the development. And, and like the, um, uh, the with, with, with developers, recruitment of testers is going to be really interesting. Yeah. And as it's a young, let's say, feature, even though it's the same old panels, but in a new way, I guess there are going to be a lot of suggestions that are contradictory at the beginning, at least, and we'll have to get to a compromise. But I'll just be waiting for submissions, let's see. Yeah, it's it's definitely some, something because it's such a large UX change, we should definitely have, uh, we should in, in, be more proactive in, in inviting people from, say, for instance, Twitter or forums and so, and so on to, to download and try the specific version. Okay, so uh, we've got a few people typing in. Hopefully, they'll be yep. um, giving us questions. How can we follow along this development? Well, there is my branch. Uh, I think I can paste the link here, but I can paste it on the UX channel also later, so everyone has it. Uh, so I have a GitLab instance for Inkscape that mirrors the Inkscape so normally, but so I'm just going to do a quick explanation. So when, when a developer creates a branch, um, the branch that they submit automatically gets built into a version of Inkscape, assuming that the code works. You can download that, that version of Inkscape and, and, and use it um, to test it out. So, so this is how you would not only test new features, but also test uh, bug fi fixes. Uh, we can actually do a demonstration of how you do that uh, to to be able to download the specific version. Uh, th this is mostly so that people don't have to build everything themselves every time. Yeah. So if I remember correctly, I actually have a pipeline that run ran correctly, don't I? Yeah. You need to have a so, pipe pipeline that succeeded. Yeah. So I'm just gonna look for one because right now I'm usually uh, this is actually after a rebase and I can't find. Let's say this one, but uh, so if you go to my branch, you'll hopefully see on the top commits one of the most recent ones. Uh, a but so I'm going to show it again just to be certain that everyone saw. So uh, this is a list of commits, and you're hopefully going to see on a recent one a button here that is an exclamation mark or a check mark, hopefully, that says that everything went fine. Uh, and if I yeah, have those, those, five... those are failing because I broke I broke them right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, this this one was actually working fine, but I did a lot of modifications after it, so it doesn't count anymore. But anyway, I have the pipeline, and uh, it's in app app image. I I don't remember actually because I haven't used this. Uh, I think I used it once, Martin. <laughs> oh right, so so um, the app image is available to you if you're a Linux user. Um, if you're a Mac user, I believe that the it, 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 I can't remember actually if it's just compiling the master branch um, and not. I think the, the side so. Branches. Yeah, I think only the master branch is building the, uh, the Mac, Mac user. Yeah, and then Windows has its own uh, particulars. So if you're a Win Windows user and you're interested, uh, I think we need to talk to one of the Win Windows developers to make but sure. But as the, I said, when, when I will have like something more. Uh, Without the major bugs that I have now, I, we could actually build uh, the three instances and put them for anyone to download to make it uh, as easy as possible for the UX team. Yeah, I would be interested actually to how we how we uh, present that to 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 users. Like the this thing that's not in Inkscape, it's not an Inkscape release, but it is uh, the builds yep. that they can test. 
Okay, uh, I don't know what to do right now, so I'm just gonna show a bit more of how Mindscape works. So, uh, I actually, for one of the issues that we talked about uh, an hour ago, uh, on my uh, instance where the toolbars are one near each other, uh, you can see better how the icons are disproportionate. Where, where you have the, you, you can drop dialogue, doc dockable dialogues here. Is that a thing that is just in your test or is that an intention, intentional design that you can see in Inkscape? Wait, uh, to dro drop them like on the left edge? Yeah, the text that literally says you can drop your dockable dialogues here. Yeah, so uh, right now I'm on X11, uh, but on Wayland I uh, can actually drop them directly here. On X11, so I'm just going to make one. And, uh, if, I ha if you have it like this here on X11, I don't think I can drop it here. So if I drop it wherever it says you can drop it dro uh, dialogues here, it doesn't work but you can go on the top, wait, for me, I'm a bit clumsy without a mouse right now. Uh, so if you, you need to go on the top edges or bottom edge of a notebook, oh, of a multi-pane and you, it will highlight so you know you can drop it there. I see, so what, what, I, what I'm asking is about the, the text itself. So one of the issues with GIMP is that it has this, um, this piece of text that appears that says, you know, you can drop text here. And a lot of people really hate that. They hate that text. Oh, uh, I, I don't know. I just kept that, kept it. I actually don't like having the initial doc there. Uh, for GIMP, it makes sense because of, it already comes with pre-populated a lot of things and you can change it from the settings and it stays as your UI or you can actually move them easily. But do you like the for, do you like the, the the highlighting? That's, that's pretty. Uh, nice. The highlighting here. Uh, well, yeah, on the you, dark. When you drag that, it, they all turn blue at the same time. Yeah, so you can because you it. can drop drop it. Uh, actually, I don't know why they highlight the top one with the tools, but uh, for the other three, yes, I understand why you could drop them there. Yeah. Let's see what happens if I drop it here. Well, yeah, because you can drop it there. So that's kind of a visual bug, or. A paper cut, let's say. Yep. Is that was that window actually stuck? <laughs> yep. So it's a bit strange sometimes. Anyway, uh, if I after I get the dialogues working better, I could focus a bit on the toolbars and make them because right here it looks nasty. But if I go into the previous demo. I think here, let me get some more space. So something like this, but with uh, not growing them as you drag them, but having some fixed sizes that you go, could go through. So two columns, three columns, something like that. Yeah, that, that would be really nice. That would be something that I waited for a long time in Inkscape when I was using it day by day. Yeah, I mean, some, sometimes a paper cut, like uh, the icons are off the screen, cannot actually be fixed because of the technical limitations. So um, that's where that's why, you know, not all things can be fixed in, in a reasonable way. But eventually they can be fixed. It's just that they take uh, the kinds of work that you put into this to be able to do it. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to wait for other questions or if somebody wants to see how something looks like in some situation just type in the so comments I, uh, while we wait for some questions I'm, I'm, i actually have some quite questions of my own about uh first of all um how you got into inkscape oh uh, well i started with an interest i saw a lot of people uh no actually started seven years ago as a web dev then uh i i knew that i didn't have any kind of visual aesthetics and then I said, okay, I have to try to learn design because that means I didn't know the difference then between aesthetics and design. And Inkscape was the first program that was free and accessible and it let me actually start this journey. And right now I'm quite skilled by some people's reviews, but not by mine because I, uh, my knowledge in design has grown a lot, but my time has been 
mostly into programming. So I've been using Inkscape for, I don't know, five, six years, something like that. So uh, right now I have to be honest, many of my designs, I've been doing them in Figma just because I can make components of those stuff and it's easily shareable with everyone and it's directly online. But yes, I'm using Inkscape as a, a tool even when I'm dis designing with Figma because something that Inkscape is special for me or and probably for a lot of devs, it follows the SVG specification and it's helpful as a programmer to do something with Inkscape. You can put it in the browser and it will look fine or perfect sometimes. Uh, yeah, I mean, probably. Yeah, well, if you don't go with like uh, special features, let's say, but you can make it to look fine in the browser. And uh, in a lot of coding projects that I've done, some uh, things that I've implemented from the bottom up just for it, reasons of efficiency, I've done a lot of uh, wrangling of SVGs in Inkscape and simplifying things, and it helps. Um, so how, how did you come to the Google Summer of Code? Uh, actually, uh, from a pretty competitive university in Romania. So, uh, we, and a lot of people here have participated in a session of Google Summer of Code. And uh, compared to our, how hellish our university is, having Google Summer of Code is quite easy as a times point of view. Like it doesn't take as much time as the as an university year. And uh, I was already interested in open source. And I, when I was pushed a bit about some idea that I knew, I actually applied to Inkscape because I saw, oh, Inkscape is here. I'm definitely going to apply. And uh, I, that was actually two years ago that I wanted to apply. But I couldn't build Inkscape because of a dependency chain problem in Ubuntu. And I lost a year then. and. Last year, I actually uh, prepared myself months before and introduced to the devs team and went on the translation team and did a bit of work on translations and small bug fixes. And then uh, that's how I started my journey with Google Summer of Code. Oh, excellent. Um, so you, you would recommend being able to uh, contribute to Inkscape even in the non-technical sense, like translations, for example? Yeah, so for the first uh, contacts, yeah, that's what I did. So I think it was something about the app file that's on the root of the project and something about translation. So the, I think those were my first commits or something closely, close to a commit. Excellent. And, and um, do, do you, are you aware of how the Google Summer of Code is going for your, the, your fellow students? Uh, right now? Uh, I don't know right this year uh, who's in Google Summer of Code. I knew some uh, a lot of people last year, so they were uh, on the Linux kernel team or something related to the kernel. They did some kernel work, and some did some uh, similar work for uh, machine learning or some distributed systems. I don't know which are, are exactly the projects, but like a quarter of the projects in Google Summer of Code right now have data science or machine learning. So if you're not actually code interested, but more, to, more on the research side, it's still a possibility to go on Google Summer of Code. So, so it looks like we're not getting any other questions. So I think it might be interesting to hear from you about um, how you'd like to um, interact with the um, user experience team in terms of improving um, and testing. Well, first things first, as, as I said, I want to get the uh, main issues out of the way. And then uh, I would definitely want to get executables into their hands. So just play with it 20 minutes, uh, maybe an hour, and write everything that you think. Then let's make a discussion at one point with everyone. Let's find out which are the avenues that we could work through. And the, I think it would be a double process. I would like to have uh, feedback from the UX team, but I would like to have feedback from somebody who's not actually actively involved in the UX, uh, in the contributors, so somebody outside the contributors. 
So I'm, I'm wondering whether, because we have a UX team GitLab issues tracker, whether something like this should have its own issue so that we know that we're going to have executables that are going to be delivered. And we have some a set of tasks, including recruiting uh, non-developers and maybe just regular users uh, to help out. If Adam is, a, is, a, is interested and okay with this procedure, um, I would be interested to, to know whether um, GitLab would be a suitable place to be able to track this kind of work. Yeah, for me, it's fine. I mean, I use GitLab. I think I already have access. I don't know to the UX team if I have access. I definitely have to the vectors one. Uh, uh, Jorge can, has to post there. You don't need any permissions, I think. Okay, yeah, I think, I think it's a good idea to track it there, at least at least from the this stage you are proposing to creating executables and tracking feedback from the people because so probably some not, sometimes midweek next week i'm gonna yeah, so create the issue good. yeah um i think we can look for as you said for people from uh, ux there's lots of people who want to try it including me and th that could be like one branch of the feedback but we as, as you said we should look for um, for the users who are not contributing, they are just using Inkscape yeah. and try to schedule some sessions with them. Uh, yeah, I think this well, is going to be the, the same pattern that I will follow for, for my for my modifier keys feature because I, I will need um, user experience feedback. Jorge has two team uh, two questions, I guess. Jorge, do you want to do you want to jump on the audio chat or are you going to type? Yeah, it? yeah, I can do. You hear me? Yep. Okay, uh, one one is actually related to what you're speaking of right now, which is what would be the path or, or what could what tools, what means, or channels could the project provide for Valentin in this case uh, for for a developer and for for the general public and UX team, etc., to communicate and be aware of each other work and feedback. For example, if he's pushing uh, like. Um, uh, binary, so people can test it. Is it uh, is there a connection, easy connection with the social media, for example, that it can be shared widely, open, so people, even people that don't follow GitLab and anything, can find out about that kind of a public call or the website, these kind of things. Is this something that it's uh, kind of easy to to do within the project? Yeah, so I think I can answer that. So um, yeah, it's, the, it's more the, for the project. Yeah, so the, the the vectors team itself is is primarily concerned with doing running the outreach parts, you know, uh, advertising, creating uh, the communications. So that's that's one side of it. Um, there is there, there is a sense where we need that kind of outreach to be able to do recruitment, especially when it comes to you know a, a bag of users who can be relied upon to to, to test. They'll know how to download things, or we can provide them with reliable links, and they know how to install versions of Inkscape that, are not, that won't replace their, their reliable versions that they may, might use for their work. Um, so in that case, I think this is a, an issue that we can bring up with the Vectors team. Could it be, well, I'm just thinking out loud, maybe, but, uh, maybe it could be run on someone other's computer, like you join it with a remote desktop, and then you try Inkscape onto one. So, so it's kind of easier for, for a new user to try without compiling and installing anything? Yeah, so I mean, um, that is much harder to run because uh, it's infrastructure. Uh, it is easier in terms of um, getting your user to install a program on their local machine, especially like, for instance, if, if, if we can produce EXEs that are, that are standalone, then having somebody download the, the program and just double click on the exe file will actually get us a lot of users um you know because they don't have to actually install anything okay uh my other question was related to the to the feature to the actual uh, mock-up itself to the to the prototype we're working on uh can you maybe put it on screen the, the yep. Just a second. Maybe it's a very specific question, but yep. in case, I'm, I'm curious about how you're planning to do that. Uh, when you put a, you call them notebooks, right? When you put a notebook so, yeah. there to write, there so is the, uh, a, 
this instance is a dialogue itself and the okay. whole thing that has a button here is a notebook and you can okay. like select well, okay. there, was, there was actually an interesting debate whether this should be called dialogues because it's a bit confusing it's, they're more like panels uh, I, I, to me but yes it is but yeah. uh, believe, believe me in the code itself they are called uh, one of the several dialogues panels yeah. editors and <laughs> okay. it's chilling so, so there's a debate also in the code no so, the code uh, can be ignored so for user experience if we need yeah, to yeah, communicate with the user that's completely fine Obviously, yeah. but I've been yeah. using the closest thing to what I had uh, at hand. Yeah. So, 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 well, my question was: There's this blank space on top of like this uh, blank row where this down arrow is that allows you to collapse the notebook. Yep. That blank space. Do you intend to do something about that, or could it be somehow actually, removed, or or put the arrow what, drop down from, to the left of the dialogs? Or so. If I want this to keep working as you see it right here, I I don't have any ideas of how to remove it. If okay. the UX mm -hmm. team reaches a conclusion that we could actually remove the whole button per se and put just an option in here with like hide the notebook, yes, it would go. But then you would have no option to uh, uh, reopen it. I think it could be sorted out, sorted out. I think we could, for example, to the yeah, I, I, I totally, arrow to the left. I mean, we, we can discuss it somewhere. Else. I, I totally understand your problem. I had the the same problem whenever I uh, introduced this. Uh, it wasn't in my initial uh, view, but it was uh, recommended by one of the devs, and it's helpful. Yes, I understand, but it's still, uh, as a designer, the UI is pretty bad there. But yeah, this I, is not I a custom co component I, that I'm doing. Yeah. I don't actually understand the functionality at all uh, from a design perspective. I think it is um, redundant. May yeah, maybe, probably. I don't know. There, ne there needs to be a discussion about this. I so. agree. And I, I think this, this is an excellent example of where the UX team can come in and run a session and figure out what the best response is. Because I don't think developers at this particular, like for this particular thing, is the, is the end about whether we should or should not have this particular kind of thing. I think it's useful, but execution is kind of uh, we we could do it. Yeah. Better. So, and yeah. So from the execution stand of point, it's not a custom thing that I did. I'm just taking a thing that already exists. So you you see this whole space. That's a space for name. But right now you couldn't actually put a name there because what you have a, an expander. It's called this thing feature with the arrow. Uh, you could put a name there and do it that says what because you he here have a dial a uh, notebook with a lot of dialogues what do you focus on maybe yeah you could like duplicate the name of the active dialogue but then it's again complicated it's redundant really yep Sounds like an interesting challenge. okay this is a yeah. seven minute warning yep oh no well I think actually it was all. It, I hope it was status for everyone and for people who didn't know about my work until now. But things are coming together. So uh, I'm going to try to make things as easy as possible for the UX team to test and play with. Excellent. Thank you very much um, for your demonstration and also for um being so open to the ux team being able to critique the the work um are there any remaining questions either for the way in which we do um ux review for for existing features and things that are in, in development or for the actual fun functionality shown here So my internet is going bad again. I'm typing in the chat the same thing. Uh, thank you everyone for your support and for the questions and for the future help, hopefully. So uh, have a great day, night, or whatever time it is in, in your time zone, everyone. Yes, thank, thank you for Valentine. Well, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pause the, the video and uh, we, we can take our break early. Yep. Okay. Thanks, everybody.
Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. Um, hope everybody managed to get a nice hot cup of tea. Somebody suggested that this was coffee, and um, it does look a bit like coffee, but uh, tea, tea in England is actually this like ultra black type that's like finely ground, and then you mix it with milk. It's, it's in fact why you have it with milk, and it kind of looks like coffee, I think. <laughs> 